When we think of bureaucracy, we think of order. Organization. Control. Authority is handed down the chain of command and distributed about a vast system of power. No one person is truly in charge. No one is truly responsible. And yet bureaucracy seems unavoidable. Bureaucracy is the necessary tool of the state to organize its society as it sees fit. But how does the state use bureaucracy to dehumanize its people? So what is dehumanization? When people think of dehumanization, they usually associate it with violence. But dehumanizing people is more than just acting violently towards them. Dehumanization is the process where people try to deprive other groups of their humanistic qualities to make it easier to oppress, discriminate against, or kill them. The state controls how people are viewed and are treated within its own borders and without. The most clear influence of the state can be found within its own borders. The state is supposed to support and protect its people from harm and threats to their rights. Time and time again throughout history, however, not only does the state fail to protect its people, it takes an active role in their dehumanization. Consider the policies of the government of Australia during the first half of the 20th century against their aboriginal population and their descendants. At this point in time, enough of the full-blooded, as they called them, aboriginal people had died due to a long history of extrajudicial murder as well as disease. The government at the time was very open about its goals. In 1919, the Chief Protector and Director of Aboriginal Affairs in Queensland, J.W. Bleakley, said the following in an official report. It is only by complete separation of the two races that we can save the Aborigine from hopeless contamination and eventual extinction, as well as safeguard the purity of our own blood. These government officials were not worried about the full-blooded Aboriginal people. However, they were worried about those of mixed descent. They didn't want a mixed society. They wanted a white society. The chief protector of Aborigines in Western Australia between 1915 and 1940, A.O. Neville, developed the following three-point plan, which was summarized by another Australian official. First, the full bloods would die out. Second, take the half-castes away from their mothers. Third, control marriages among half-castes and so encourage intermarriage with the white community. In this way, it would be possible to eventually forget that there were ever any Aborigines in Australia. These sentiments and policies were widespread throughout local and regional officials in Australia at this time. Some officials even proposed forced sterilization for those of mixed descent. These bureaucrats were put in charge of the lives of these people and, through their influence, stripped them of their humanity. Through sexual control, they limited their bodily agency. Through the process of taking children away, they eliminated their chance at a future for their people, their culture. In Hannah Arendt's 1951 book, The Origins of Totalitarianism, she discusses the issues that stateless peoples and minorities have with retaining and protecting their human rights. She says, The stateless people were as convinced as of the minorities that the loss of national rights was identical with the loss of human rights, that the former inevitably entailed the latter. The more they were excluded from rights in any form, the more they tended to look for reintegration into a national identity, into their own national community. The response that Arendt discusses involving a refocus on a national and cultural identity becomes impossible, as the chance for the Aborigines to forge a future is eliminated. These officials wanted to engineer a homogenous white Australia without difference, so anyone who fell outside of that vision was no longer part of Australia and, through these bureaucratic policies, was barely even human. Even in a democratic state, there are problems with dehumanization. When the state gives its people more liberty in their decisions, certain groups always end up being the minority. Democracy allows for the majority group to dominate, oppress, and dehumanize the minority groups. Although the events that occurred with the Aboriginal people were terrible, this was not a unique event that had never occurred in history. The exploitation of different racial, ethnic, or national groups has happened almost everywhere in the world. Arendt, too, lived in a time where dehumanization through regulations and laws happened. Arendt wrote The Origins of Totalitarianism to express how human rights can be taken away by bureaucratic policies. Although Arendt focused on states ruled by authoritative power, even nations with democratic policies have faults in its system. A key historical example of a country that continued to dehumanize its people until its collapse is Yugoslavia. After the destruction of World War II across all of Europe, Yugoslavia formed under a dictator, Joseph Tito. Tito ruled under a harsh hand, 
so the ethnic problems weren't as prevalent during his 30-year reign. After his death in 1980, however, the nation began to collapse from within. The Serbians, Croatians, Slavs, and Bosniaks had lived in the same country for a while, but with this change of power dynamic, all the groups looked to surpass the others. The pre-existing problems of all of these different groups were finally able to be acted upon under this new, democratic-type Yugoslavia. Now, the Bosnians and Croatians wanted to separate from Yugoslavia and become their own country. Instantly, the Serbians decided that ethnic cleansing would be the only solution to get rid of the opposing groups. Serbia invaded the area where most of the Croatians lived and carried out a mass execution of Croatian men. Soon after, the Serbians used the power of being the majority holder of Yugoslavia people and with their army, composed mostly of Serbians, invaded the Bosniak area. Men, women, and children were shot, raped, and killed as they tried to flee the Serbian army. All of these different ethnic groups experienced genocide at the hand of other groups. These tensions that had existed in all of Yugoslavia's time as a nation finally spilled over when the bureaucratic laws favored the choices of the people instead of the choices of a dictator. Arendt noted that democracy favors the majority as well. In the end of her chapter in The Origins of Totalitarianism, she states, quote, for it is quite conceivable, and even within the realm of practical political possibilities, that one fine day a highly organized and mechanism humanity will conclude quite de democratically, namely by majority decision, that for humanity as whole it would be better to liquidate certain parts thereof. End quote. What about people who are kicked out of their nation and don't hold a national identity? Migrants without a nation have it even worse off. They are dehumanized more and are most likely the minority. Migrants are people who move across national borders, whether voluntarily or not. More specifically, refugees are involuntarily displaced people who have taken refuge in a state other than their nation of origin. One of the primary reasons that migration leads to dehumanization is the question of citizenship. Citizenship grants the, the citizens of a given nation certain rights that are not guaranteed to non-citizens. It is an inherently exclusive concept that precludes migrant people from certain human rights, begging the question, are migrants really human in the eyes of the state? In The Origins of Totalitarianism, Arendt grapples with citizenship and national identity. She addresses the overlap and distinction between citizens' rights and human rights in particular. Do these concepts define people? How do they manifest in government policies? Are they appropriate metrics for the way we should engage in politics? These ideals put forth by the state create a vision of a citizen, a member of a nation that is allegedly the arbiter of truth and justice, a nation that is supposed to protect its residents as individuals. However, the concept of citizenship fails to be an inclusive framing of humans. In fact, citizenship is an inherently exclusive concept that produces violence. Arendt continues to assert that, quote, the rights of man, supposedly inalienable, proved to be unenforceable, even in countries whose constitutions were based upon them, wherever people appeared who were no longer citizens of any sovereign state, end quote. This phenomenon leads to migrant crises and displacement issues, in which people without a nation of their own are not guaranteed human rights. As a result, many migrants are met with xenophobia from citizens who use inflammatory rhetoric and terminology to dehumanize immigrants. One of the most prominent ways that governments have mobilized against migrants in contemporary times is at the United States-Mexico border. Though Immigration and Customs Enforcement was founded as an offshoot of the Department of Homeland Security in 2003, it reached a record number of deportations under the Obama administration. It's no surprise that reports of migrant abuse at the hands of the government agency have taken center stage. Over 1,200 sexual abuse complaints were filed against the immigration detention center workers were acquired by The Intercept in 2018, though the number of violations that went unreported is likely much higher. Children are separated from their parents at the border without any word of reunification. Detention center guards call immigrant suicide attempts failures. Can the USA truly be the land of the free if it is only free for those who are in it? If we allow the vast bureaucracy of our government to define what it means to be human and dehumanize all those outside that definition, we give them the power to adjust that definition any way they see fit. Bureaucracy must be understood. It is the responsibility of every citizen to understand what their government does and how they do it. Bureaucracy inherently destroys accountability, so we must supply it. 
So be wary of bureaucracy and be wary of the greater good. Humanity disappears into the massive void of bureaucracy if no one is there to hold it up.